Hello there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I shall be reading from Bake Believe by Corey Cooper. Chapter 1. Frozen Waffles. Why am I still in bed? It's the last day of summer vacation. I can't waste one more minute, second or millisecond sleeping. This is going to be the most epically awesome day of all time. Like, so good that awesome looks at this day and wishes it was this epic. This might sound like a lot of pressure, but I'm ready. For weeks I've been keeping track <coughs> of the summer stuff I love to do most, so I could pick out all the best things. Now I have a mental list just waiting for me to get to it. 1. Go to the pool. 2. Use sunlight to on my hair. 3. Work on my tan. 4. Try something new at the snack shack. 5. Meet three new boys. And lastly, give at least one of the boys my phone number. I am determined to squeeze the most amount of fun out of every single second of this day. Obviously, I can't get any of it done while I'm laying here like a slug. I have to get up and call Robin. I roll out of bed, no clue what time it is. My stinking alarm clock has been tick, tick, ticking away the precious minutes of my last summer day, so I have been ignoring it with all my might. Before I stand up, I smack the clock face down on the nightstand. I should have done that before. The irritating neon numbers winking in my peripheral were giving me a headache. And headaches are not epically awesome. I wonder, would I stop if I use all my allowance to send it on a vacation to Hawaii? I could find a beachfront resort somewhere far away from me and time can sit next to the ocean with a fruity little drink. I won't mind if time decided to stay there for a couple of weeks even. This could totally work. Even time must need a break sometimes. Or maybe not, since that darn alarm clock is still going at it, just muffled now. I plop my pillow down on my nightstand to shush it even more and I tiptoe to my bedroom door as quietly as possible. I use it open so it doesn't squeak. It does like to squeak sometimes and I don't want to wake anyone up in case it's super early. For all that trying to ignore the clock's tick-tocks, I didn't actually look at the time. I'll just check when I get my phone. Because of the family's no screens in the bedrooms rule, my phone spends the night in a basket on the coffee table. Out of habit, I look both ways before I slip out of my room and into the hall. Not a creature is stirring. Even so, I prefer to sneak along the walls and slink around corners like I'm in some big deal spy movie. It's just more fun that way. I serpentine down the stairs and down and crawl across the living room. When I'm almost at the top of the coffee table, I execute a super awesome somersault that leaves me on my back staring up at the phone basket. Nailed it. I reach one arm into the basket and rummage around until I feel sequins. My phone, the most beautiful creation of turquoise and silver sparkles, and I'm very happy to have it in my hand. I hold the phone above my face while I text. My eyes starts to fall asleep instantly, but I ignore them. Because this is super important, I type as fast as I can. Hey, are you awake? I tap my toes together while I wait. It's been almost five whole seconds. If Robin doesn't respond in a couple more, I'll have to text her again. I can't waste time lying on the living room. Floor today. My thumbs hover on the keyboard, ready to text to tack. Looking for Robin, she responds right away. Yeah, now my thumbs fly over my phone like a pair of whirling dervishes. Robin's answers come back to me just as quickly as I can type and send. Two words, last day. One word, okay. One word, pool. One word, love it. I roll my eyes seriously, that is not one word. Good thing Robin is so cute. That's two words, weirdo. Yeah, so, I'm coming over. I fling my phone into the air with a squeal and then roll to the side so it doesn't hit me in the face. I'm not the best at catching things. My phone smacks the floor in the exact spot where my head was before I moved out of the way. I scramble to my feet and snatch my phone off the carpet and barrel upstairs to my parents' room. In my excitement, I forgot to be stealthy and sound like, just like that herd of elephants my mum loves so much. I stamp in through the door and spring onto their huge fluffy bed. Oof, comes from Dad. What comes from Mum? Can I go to the pool with Robin? Comes from me. What time is it? My mum groans as she rolls over. I can't answer that because I still haven't looked at the time. 
I start to turn my phone back on, but mum is quicker. She reaches over and adjusts the clock so she can see the numbers. Kat Anderson. She turns the clock so I can see the phone numbers. 6.15am. I clear my throat. My mum stares at me with laser eyes that are so powerful they may give me male pattern baldness when I'm older. Looking for my hair, my dad distracts her. He's let, he lets out a snorting snore that is loud enough to reach Seattle. People there are probably looking up at the sky wondering what in the smorgasbord that sound was. Mum nudges dad so he'll roll over, taking the noise with him. We watch until he starts breathing like a normal person again. Then my mum snaps her eyes back to me. I run my fingers through my hair, twirling a strand around my finger. It's the last day of summer, I say in a small voice. I hear the pool is very nice this time of year. My mum sighs herself back onto the pillows. I know it's the last day of summer and I know you're excited, Cat. She gives me a sympathetic look that can't be any good for my plans. But this conversation would make a whole lot more sense in a couple of hours. A couple of hours, I exclaim. This day will almost be over in a couple of hours. Mum levels me with a look. It's six o'clock. 6.17, I turn the clock so she can get another look at the numbers. My mum sighs again, all the way from her toes this time. Cat, my point is that nothing is going to open this early. The mall doesn't even open for three hours. Oh, sure it does. I wave a hand to get rid of her silly sentence. Mum's left eyebrow rises just a notch. I nod to emphasise my words. You know, they open it super early for all those old ladies to walk laps. The mall is open, but the shops aren't. OK, Mum looks at me, her eyes trying not to wrinkle in the corners. I'm wondering how you know this. Do you often go to the mall before it opens so you can walk with the old ladies? A smile curls the corner of her mouth and her eyes lose the wrinkle battle. She is totally teasing me. This is so not the time for teasing. Doesn't she know that the lasting memory of my whole summer hangs on this one day? I shake my head, making my hair fly in front of my eyes. I stop to smooth it back into place. That's super weird, Mum. I thought so too. Anyways, I wave my hand again up and down and all around to help us get back on the subject. The pool. It opens at like seven, I think. That's 40 minutes from now. It will take me that long to get ready. Then it takes some time to get there. So that should work out perfect. Am I right? Can I go, please? This is the last day of summer. I can't waste a single minute. Mum slips down her pillows like she's a balloon that just ran out of air. One long excruciating silence later, she pokes my dad in the back. She does it a few times before he jerks around to face her. What? Andrew, what do you think about your oldest child going to the pool this morning? My dad's eyes are squinty slits. He tries to open them all away but gives up before it happens. Is it morning? Are you sure the sun is up? Yeah, in my enthusiasm to prove it, I spring off the bed to the window and pull up the blinds with a little too much force. The blinds slam against the top thingy and wave across the window like a banner and the room floods with light. Hello, daylight savings time. See, sunshine. I stop myself from adding a trump to ta-da. My parents probably won't appreciate that much excitement this early in the morning. Sure enough, my dad rolls over and covers his head with a pillow. Mum pulls, Mum pulls the blanket over her head with a loud groan. Yes, fine, OK, you can go to the pool. She waves her hand to shoo me away. I let go of the string and all that brilliant sunlight disappears. The blinds hit the bottom of the window sill with a super loud bang. I cringe but recover right away. I'm not going to get a minor thing like that damp in my spirits. Unfortunately, my parents are not so resilient as I am. I'm up. My dad sits in shade. I'm up. What? Oh, nothing. I say like this conversation is no big deal, even though the exact opposite is true. We were just talking about me going to the pool today. By the way, how are you planning on getting there? Mum's muffled voice asks. She's still under the blanket, even though it's like Dracula's tomb in here again. Um, walk? I twirl my phone around my fingers, not looking at either of my parents. My mum pulls the blanket down so I can see her face. Eyes first, then nose, then mouth. Oh no, she's chewing on her bottom lip. That is never a good thing for my mum to do. I clasp my hands together with my the phone in the middle and hold on tight. This is going to be fine. I knew this part of the conversation might get hairy. I've been to the pool a zillion times in my life, but always with an adult. My mum, my aunt are one of my friends' mums. I'm totally old enough to go alone. I'm 14 after all, but this will be the first time. Mum and sort of dad, mostly mum, is having a hard time watching me grow up. I heard her and dad talking about it late one night when I was passing their door for a drink of water. They were saying something about how it's important that I have freedom, but also consistent boundaries and stuff for whatever. 
I think what they mean is I'm the guinea pig. My parents try all this teenage parenting stuff out on me. And then when my younger sibs get to go where I am, get to where I am, my parents will be total experts. That's the plan anyway. Personally, I don't see what the big deal is about teenagers. I'm not any different now than when I was 12. In fact, I would say that I get better with age. Like cheese. Or boy bands. Finally, my mum nods so slowly she looks like she slept on her neck funny. OK, you can go, but take your phone, check in when you get there and let me know when you head home. Promise? Yes, I nod back, trying to show with each motion how mature I am. This is way trickier than it sounds because my insides are riding a looping roller coaster and screaming with both hands in the air. Even I'm impressed with my self-restraint. I ease off the bed and slowly back out of my parents' bedroom, trying not to bump anything or make any sudden noises that would cause my mum to change her mind. When I finally make it into the hall, my pent-up excitement excitement comes out of my fingers. The tip of each one tingles as they skip across the keypad of my phone. Parental say, OK, we can go alone. What the what? Robin answers right away, which makes me think she was staring at her phone that whole time waiting for me. I hope not. She better be ready to go already. It would be better for us to leave now and have to wait at the pool for lifeguards than wait around here and risk one changing her mind. Right, where are you? Hurry. Coming, coming. There is so much pent-up energy in my legs I want to burst into the air like a firecracker and zoom around the room. But I don't. Instead, I dash to my room straight to the closet to find my cutest swimming suit. This is an important moment one never knows who one might see at the pool on the last day of summer. I swing the closet doors open and stop. Oopsies, apparently I haven't been taking my dirty clothes to the laundry room like mum asked me to at least a zillion times in the last week. I mean, I was planning on it, and I will. I'll get to it, just not right now. I have to hurry. I wasn't joking around about my mum changing her mind. It's a real possibility up until the moment I leave the house, so I really need to get this show on the road. I dig through my dirty clothes basket until I find my favourite swing suit. It's still damp and smells disgusting, like Brussels sprouts with queso and mouldy socks. Disgusting. So not good. I leave my clothes all over the floor. It's OK, they're all dirty anyways. And return to my closet. My second cutest suit is dry and smells like ocean spring tide. I pull it on and cover it over with my favourite pair, pair of purple Bermuda shorts, just slightly wrinkled, and a flowery flower, flowy flowered tunic that I tie into a knot at my waist. I look adorable. Well, from the knees up. The pool is close, but still a walk. As much as I want to wear my sparkly pink flip-flops, I choose the worn white tennis shoes Robin and I decorated with markers one boring day in science last year. They don't exactly match the rest of me, but they are super comfortable. And hopefully anyone worth seeing will be so overcome by my amazing self that they won't notice my feet. It's risky, but I don't want blisters today. Because blisters are not epically awesome either. Alright, I have my phone and my tote bag filled with everything else I need. Lip gloss, lotion, hair ties, candy... Check and check and check. Now I just need to eat breakfast. Fast. The fastest breakfast ever. I hurry down the stairs. Uh-oh, Mum's in the kitchen. I skid to a stop when I see her and walk the rest of the way to the fridge. Like it's just another normal morning. I totally thought she would go back to sleep after I left her room. That would have been better for me. She can't change her mind if she's unconscious. But here she is staring at the contents of the fridge with a weird look on her face. Hey, Mummy. Mum. 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 I squeeze by to get to the freezer so and put that to a box of waffles. I'm a pro at baking these things. Seriously. I can make them crispy on the outside and chewy soft on the inside. This is super hard to do, especially in the standard two slice toast of my mum got on clearance at the grocery store. I have a gift. Hey kitty cat, mum smoothed my hair a couple of times. She has forgiven me for waking her up at the crackiest crack of dawn or she wouldn't be petting my head. I pull a plate from the cupboard above the toaster and dance on my toes while I wait for the toaster to work its magic. What are you doing? I ask. Why are you staring at the fridge? Oh, she shrugs with just one shoulder. The cheek I can see from this side of her face looks blotchy red, like mine do when I run laps in PE. But that doesn't make any sense. My mum is shivering in front of the refrigerator, not running her lungs out on the sweltering ball field. Sometimes I just like to look at the ingredients in the fridge and cupboards, my mum says without looking at me. I purse my lips. That's weird, Mum. She laughs, but it sounds more like choking. I know it's weird, I just... She looks at the milk jug longingly. I just sometimes... I just really want to bake something. 
She whispered the word back like it's a naughty swear. I stare at her. For reals? I am completely kaflummoxed. Why would you want to bake something when you can buy it? You hate baking. Don't say hate, cat. Mum closes the fridge door slowly. One palm lingers on the stainless steel like she isn't quite ready to let it go. I shake my head. This is starting to get super weird. Weirder than weird. Okay, don't you detest, de loathe baking? Mum turns to me with a half smile. That is not a word. It is now. I stretch my face into a grin, but my heart doesn't join the fun. I feel all squeamish suddenly. I check the cupboard for juice or ginger ale. I can't get sick today. Sick is super not epically awesome. Do we have any apple juice? I ask over my shoulder. When mum doesn't answer right away, I decide she needs my full attention. She stares at the clock on the microwave. Oh no, she's biting her lower lip. Mayday, mayday. Now that there's a crinkle in her forehead, her thoughts are so obvious as if it's... She already said them out loud. She's having doubts about letting me go to the pool without an adult. I totally should have skipped breakfast and left while I had the chance. Why did I loiter? Loitering is practically illegal. Or is that littering? Oh, it doesn't matter. What am I going to do? The pool isn't open yet, she says slowly. It's still so early. It's 6.45, I say in a rush. All my brain powers are focused on figuring out how to get out of here as fast as possible. I contemplate flipping a box of cereal up in the air to create a diversion so I can ninja vanish out the dining room window. That just might work. Before I can put my brilliant plan into action, my waffles pop up. Both mum and I jump a mile and one of us squeaks. I really hope it wasn't me, but I can't say for sure. I grab the steaming waffles with the tips of my fingers and thumb transferring them to a plate so fast my skin doesn't feel a burn. It's time to implement one of my tried and true distraction techniques. Technique number four, to be exact. Talk. Talk a lot. Talk until the other person forgets what they were thinking about. No, until they forget there was ever a time before I opened my mouth. I reach for a knife to butter my waffles and let the words flow unrestrained. Hey mum, guess what? I had the weirdest dream last night. Do you ever have dreams where it's super real and even after you wake up it takes you a few minutes to come back to earth? That's how this one was, except this dream was super kooky dukes. Hey, do you ever wonder if your brain notices the, dream, notices the dream is weird? I mean, why doesn't it go, whoa, this is straight up bananas, and puts a stop to the whole nutso thing? Then it could straighten it out into stuff that makes sense. That seems like something the brain would do. Anyway, so in this dream, I was walking down the cobblestone street that looked like the cartoon Beauty and the Beast, you know that first scene where Belle is singing and walking through the village? Like that, except I wasn't singing, I was sniffing. Like every few feet I would stop and sniff. I think I was looking for something, but I'm not sure because I don't know what I would have been looking for. But then the village or whatever turned into the mall and there were a bunch of old ladies there wearing bright orange sequined leggings and retro sweatsuits. I tried to figure out a nice way to tell them that their clothes didn't match, but then a janitor distracted me by throwing sprinkles on my head. I stopped to take a breath. Judging by the expression on my mum's face, my chatter has done a good job. She looks all perplexed, like she might be worried for my cognition, coming up with a dream like that. This is good. But the waffles haven't fared as well. I wasn't paying attention to them while I buttered, and now they're a sopping, soggy mess. I don't even know how much butter I used. I eyed the dwindling cue. How full was it when I started? I pick up one of the waffles and bend it in half like a taco, watching the stream of melted butter that drips back onto my plate. There's no question about eating the waffles. Of course, I'm still going to eat them. I just have to wait a few minutes for the leaking to stop so I can take a bite without making a mess of my clothes. Just as I start my first luscious mouthful, there was a tap in the door. Who could that be? My mum moves towards the door. It's so early. I have a pretty good idea. Buenos dias! Robin bursts into the kitchen. She's wearing enormous sunglasses bigger than her head and a that's a fluorescent pink. fluorescent pink to match her capris. Anyone else who dressed like that would be look would look like a loony hobo. But Robin looks like a teen magazine cover model, even with her old save the unicorns t-shirt thrown over her swimming suit. I can't help but grin when I see her. She is my very bestest best friend. 
Oh yeah, and my cousin. Thank you very much for listening to this chapter reading. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll go check out the book. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.